What's going on, everybody? This is Mike. And this is your Average Gamer Podcast, episode number one. Man, it feels good. New podcast, new life, new way to kick off uh, the end of October. Haven't done one of these in a while, so I decided to switch up the format a little bit. It's funny, too. I was thinking about it, thinking, hey, I've got to switch up the format. I'm going to switch up how we go about the podcast, and, uh, well, hold on a second, I gotta get my Sennheiser headphones on here, hold on, there we go, and so, uh, ooh, and so we were, I was thinking, like, how did I, um, how did I ever get to the, what's going on, this is Mike, I was thinking about that, and that's just how I opened up the podcast one day. So I didn't change it for the uh, average gamer podcast here, but uh, you know, wanted to keep uh, at least keep something comfortable for everybody. Um, so before we get into it, uh, wanted to open up with um, a few sponsorships. Um, first off, it would not be a podcast if we didn't um, call out Squarespace or HelloFresh. Uh, or any of those companies, just wanted to call them out. Great companies, by the way. I don't have any huge pitch, um, but, uh, but just so you know, they're great companies. I wanted to let you know that. Um, so what are we going to be talking about today on the podcast? We're going to talk some Stadia. Um, I have some huge question marks on Stadia. Huge question marks. I am actually kind of mind-boggled by some of the things they have going on. Might be talking some Bethesda and some Fallout... Uh, 76 news and then uh yeah maybe take some time to talk about uh some maybe you know maybe mix in some politics um i was recently uh recently um found out about some crazy stuff about china that uh that i never knew about so we might hit on that as well but anyway stadia here's the crazy thing so there's been a lot of conversation about Stadia, um, and is it going to be successful? Who's this really for? Um, things like that. And like for me, I'm I'm kind of just mind boggled by their entire approach to this whole thing. So first off, data caps. We all know about data caps, and like for me, I'm actually in the middle of Iowa, and as a gamer, um. I want to try out the latest and greatest, but being in the middle of Iowa, I don't have things like the latest and greatest internet. But that said, it's mind boggling to me that Google's releasing something like Stadia and they're not even accounting for people like me in a rural area that might not have the internet to take advantage of all of the things that they're promoting. Uh, especially like, Look, I don't have the money for a crazy PC. Right? So, like, for me, this is appealing. But all of a sudden you're saying, hey, sign up. But, by the way, if you want to be able to take advantage of 4K, you're going to have to have these ridiculous internet speeds. And you're going to have to have an uncapped, um, like, an uncapped internet plan. I don't even under, I like, that's crazy to me. So basically, I'm buying this because it sounds great. Like I'm buying it knowing that um knowing that like I want to try it. Like I want to try it. So I'm gonna buy it because of that, but I just can't believe like it's on Google to figure it out for me. Google needs to figure out how to get me in rural Iowa. 4K, get the bandwidths down, and make sure my ISP takes my data caps away. I don't understand how they haven't even thought of this. That's fucking mind-boggling to me. And then the other piece of it, 
how the hell they're gonna like and again i'll pay for the pre-order for the um founder's edition i want to be i want to be on that ground level right and so i'm gonna get destiny but then even at the same time i can't believe that they and i don't know how pricing structure works completely but fuck their pricing structure seriously so they're gonna like they're charging full price for games it hasn't been fully announced yet but fuck them for that I can't it I can't actually believe. So they're charging full price for games apparently other than the thing in their founders program. Apparently I need good internet connection to get 4K. Otherwise if I wanted 4K I'd have to spend like 2 grand on a PC, which I'm totally not going to do. And I need an internet connection that's uncapped. And here's the problem for me. See, and it wouldn't even be an issue if I didn't have Netflix and Hulu and all these other things, then it wouldn't be an issue. But I want this service. And now with this service, now I'm going to hit my data cap. And so, like, it's on Google to figure that out. It's absolutely ridiculous to me how they can fuck up not thinking about my internet speeds, how they can't think about... um the fact that I probably personally have data caps and the fact that they're not even thinking about how I ha probably have other subscriptions anyway that I have to get around. I, I just, I don't understand. I just don't understand the subscription plan. I don't understand how they think everybody just has miraculous internet and all this stuff. But like, again, and at the end of the day, what, I mean, what do they expect me to do? It's basically a new gaming platform. They just think I'm not going to, get it like come on google like honestly honestly google you gotta get your shit together this is absolutely asinine to me that they haven't thought of these things i cannot believe google of all places hasn't uh hasn't thought of these things but i'm excited about it i am excited about it. i do want to see how it works but i mean like, I'm, I know the problem is I know I'm going to be angry um, when it doesn't perform. And I know they've told me it's not going to perform, but I need to see it for myself. And so, I don't know. It's just kind of bullshit. I just can't believe Google's actually, um, I just can't believe Google's actually going to release something like that and not even consider some of the people in the rural area. And it, like, I'm, and that's a fucked up part. People are like, well, Mike, you're probably not the target market. No. I'm probably not the target market, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to buy it. And because of that, they should actually still account for that because there's going to be a lot of people like me that buy it anyway. And so they should probably just figure it out because that's where all of their money's going to come from anyway. So what the, it's just it fucking, it just irritates me to no end. I can't believe that they have the balls to, uh, to do that. Um, Moving on, actually moving on, I wanted to talk about Nintendo. So Nintendo has Luigi's Mansion 3 coming out. I am super excited for Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, if you're not excited about Luigi, here's the, here's the funny part about Luigi, Luigi's Mansion 3. I'm doing something crazy that I haven't done. on. So <clears throat> on Retro Game Fix, we used to have... Um, we used to do some reviews and some articles and some just different shit, mostly when we had more time on our hands. Um, and I actually remember doing like a Titanfall review a long time ago where like I rated it like a seven and people like it was when the Xbox was first out. People were like, oh, no, fuck you. You know, you're trolling me uh, about Titanfall. And I was like, no, it just it's I just don't think it's such a great game. So I've written reviews before. Um, and I, I'm pretty good at them. And so here's the thing that's I'm going to do for Luigi's Mansion 3 because I'm so excited about it. I'm going to do a review for Luigi's Mansion 3. We're bringing back the reviews. And for me, and this is the thing with Nintendo games, we know Nintendo p puts so much focus on the details we know that um, they put so much focus on 
releasing games that, um, well, I mean, it's a Nintendo stamp of approval for the most part, right? And so we know that the game's going to come out and be quality. We know that the game's going to be fun. We know that the game's going to be charming, right? I don't want to over buzzword it, but like there's going to be tenderness. There's going to be care. Um, the things that we've grown to expect from Nintendo, we're going to get them. And so for me, because I'm not going to get an early copy of this, I have no way to get an early copy of, um, of Luigi's Mansion. I don't have contacts at Nintendo. I don't have a friend whose uncle works at Nintendo. I don't have any of that shit. But I can promise you Luigi's Mansion 3 coverage on day one. And I'm going to tell you how I do it just so you're filled in on how I'm going to accomplish it. There are things that I can assume to be accurate going into a Nintendo review. And the Luigi's Mansion stuff and just the the detail that Nintendo puts in the games is one of them. So I've already started writing my review. And I'm just I'm using historic just the historic assumptions that I know I get from Nintendo. So cute and charming, we know it's going to be that. Gameplay is going to be tight and concise, we know it's going to be that, right? So just out of the gate, I see a lot of people say with a review you should start at the bottom and then kind of work up to your score. When it comes to a Nintendo game, especially for me, I started at a 10 and then start taking points away. And there's certain things I know about a Nintendo game where I I don't have any points to take away on all of the things like the detail, the charmingness. I've seen uh, so many pictures um, and then even just the early videos that... I get what's going on, right? And I don't think, I don't see anything at this point I need to take points away for, right? So the only thing left is to play the game for, like, I just, I'll just knock out a couple hours when I get it. And I'm gonna, I'm going to know what I need to know to be able to write a review for the game. And so at that point, you're gonna get day one coverage. And again, this is just a change in how we're doing things here at Retro Game Fix. You're gonna get day one coverage of Luigi's Mansion 3 because I'm pre-writing my review for the game in anticipation of how good it's going to be. And if once I play a few hours, I might take um a point away here or there. And by a point, I mean like a point, like a fraction of a point, right? So we're we're gonna work on a scale of ten. And if there's things that just don't jive right, or maybe there's a joke that just doesn't quite resonate with me, I might take away like a tenth of a point, right? So my expectation for my rating is going to be anywhere between like probably a 9.2 and a 9.6 is what I would say. It just depends because sometimes Nintendo doesn't quite get the humor right. And, and being a little bit older and an adult, I know that sometimes some of this stuff is written for children. And while I'd love to be objective about that, um, well, I will be objective about that and say, hey, it's written for kids. But for me personally, I just can't give them the benefit of the doubt when it comes to some of those jokes and just different things, those charming things. I just can't. So I'm still guessing probably like a 9.2 to a 9.6 which is incredible score still. So if anything, I recommend um, Luigi's Mansion out of the gate. Um, third, actually, you know what? Let's take a break. Let's take a quick break um, and hear from uh, one of our sponsors. This week, uh, one of the sponsors, uh, two sponsors, the Video Game Outsiders podcast, videogameoutsiders.com. Check them out. And then um, the Dropcast, uh, Game Over Greg on Twitter. Um, you need to check them out. And let me, uh, I want to be really, I want to be really, uh, really make sure that I'm giving you the right URL here. So give me just a second. Uh, it is... There you go. It's a uh, youtube.com slash drop rate. So check that out. 
Just wanted to take a break there. So let's move on to Fallout 76. Turns out today that Fallout 76 has a new, or Bethesda is releasing a new subscription program for Fallout 76. This is completely asinine to me. I don't, I don't understand how, what, like, what are they thinking? So, and here's the thing. I have Fallout 76, and they're releasing some content and making some upgrades to the game. And it's just, it sucks because, like, I have to buy it. How am I not going to buy it? That's what I, like, you know what I mean? Like, I don't understand. Again, as a hardcore gamer, I have to buy this. And now I'm going to give them a hundred bucks for a year. I don't know. And it's basically play to, pay to win. I mean, I can't believe more people aren't outraged by this. And a lot of people are outraged, but I've seen, I've seen a few people on the internet be like, well, you don't have to buy it. And it's like, yeah, you do. If you're a fallout 76 fan. Yeah, you do. They're basically exploiting us. Right. And for me, it's not even as much of being a Fallout 76 fan um, as it is a Bethesda fan. And what I've learned in gaming is that sometimes you have to buy and play the games you don't like to support the, the business model and support the company. So you do get the good games you do want, like Skyrim, for example. Right. I want a new Skyrim. So I'm going to buy this and now I'm going to have to give them the money. And it's just crazy how they know I'm going to give them money and they just put shit out there that they know I'm going to pay for. Like, fuck them. Like, fuck them for doing that. I can't. It's just. I don't know, man. It's just kind of I'm just I'm so offended by it, to be honest with you. But like, I'm going to do it anyway. Because, of course, I will. Who wouldn't? Who fucking wouldn't? Right. I don't know. I'm getting a little heated. I uh let's move on from that one. And then lastly, and I don't like to get I don't like to get political. I don't. I don't like to get political. But this so a few I'm got I gotta chime in. A few weeks ago, apparently, um apparently a um a blizzard um overwatch streamer. I don't know if he's even an overwatch streamer. I don't even know, but it's blizzard, right? And so Activision Blizzard, we were already on a boycott. I mean, so we were on a boycott uh, back when Blizzard and Activision laid off a pile of people. We were already boycotting them. But then, <sighs> let's be real. We, can't, we can only boycott for so long. So when that whole shit happened, we boycotted them and on Twitter. I was a part of it. It was crazy. Because you have to let these companies know. You have to hit them where it hurts. Hit them in the wallet. Um, we boycotted them for... And tried to cancel them, which didn't work. Because they do have great games. We boycotted them for their layoffs. And then, you know, they release good games. So I was like, okay, we punished them enough. Let's go back. And so we started... Yeah, I started playing more Blizzard games again. And then... They go ahead and pull some bullshit and they they um, ban. And I, let me I want to make sure. I've got this 100 percent correct. I want to make sure I have 100. OK, they banned a. Player that was using pro Hong Kong. Kind of political speech, because apparently in China. I didn't know this about China. This is news to me, and this is why I'm so offended. Apparently in China, it's very... They censor a lot of things. Um, they censor things for their... Um, if they're citizens. They can, there's like, it's almost like not free speech. Like what I'm doing right now, free Hong Kong, free, pro, free, free Hong Kong, right? Apparently that's all this uh, Blizzard player was doing on their stream. They banned him. Which is fucked up. So, again, 
I just get back on the Blizzard bandwagon, and now I have to cancel them again. And it's it's crazy because apparently China, like, I don't know what happened in China, but it must have had something to do with um, game streaming in China, and all of a sudden they wanted to censor game streaming, and someone just decided to be pro Hong Kong to try to get game streaming back in and blizzard banned them for that it's, it's just like the whole thing is just pure hypocrisy i don't even understand it um so yeah i'm not supporting anything um i'm not supporting anything that's uh pro censorship or you know goes to support china or anything like that i'm not so i'm moving my stuff on to but probably I don't even know. It's been a while. I mean, maybe League of Legends if I do streaming. I, I don't know yet. But, like, can you... I, hmm. And, again, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not as articulated as I should be on this topic. It just bothers the shit out of me, and I can't believe it. So, um, I'm, ba I'm, blo I'm just canceling everything that has to do with Blizzard and Activision. Um, and, and uh, yeah, man. I, I just can't do it any longer. I'm just so offended by it. Uh, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully you guys kind of follow suit. So, uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's the, uh, first episode of, um, the Average Gamer Podcast, uh, here on RetroGameFix.com. My name is Mike, and, uh, until next time, see ya! <laughs>